Hello and welcome to the Cube Pod, episode 35. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, our weekly podcast where we extract a signal from the noise in the industry, the top stories we're tracking, what we're doing, who we're talking to, getting the top stories and sharing that with you and commentary. Uh, see, Dave, great to see you. You were in Palo Alto this week for SuperCloud 4, where we had a, our first SuperCloud 4 dedicated, SuperCloud event dedicated to generative AI. Great to see you. Rob Stretchy was out, the whole team from your studio in Boston was out. Uh, great to see the team. What an unbelievable event. I'm getting feedback on LinkedIn. This is the best event I've ever seen. You guys did an amazing job with the short hits. The breadth of guests was phenomenal. I just went down a rabbit hole for two days. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, the content was awesome. Episode 35 here in the pod. So much to talk about. Um, Super Cloud event, which we're going to unpack, is a ton in there. I mean, there's just that was just a perfect storm of great guests and amazing. Amazon had their earnings. Microsoft posted their earnings. IBM beat. Intel beat, Meta beat, ServiceNow tops expectations, Juniper beat, um, Microsoft, F five shares dropped and they beat. Uh, just so much action and the and you start to see the signs from the industry. So um, let's get in. Great to see you, episode thirty five. Um, let's let's get it let's get it on. Yeah, I mean to me, you know, Microsoft is just ticking all the boxes. Talk about a fifty six to fifty seven billion dollar quarter. They're saying second half growth, they're guiding of 27%, John, on a, on, a, on a company that's in the mid-50 billions. They were the only company that cited actual sort of revenue and tailwinds from AI. They said they had a 300 uh, basis point tailwind, so 3% added growth to Azure because of AI. And Azure was up 28% in constant currency, which is faster than the previous quarter. I mean, their productivity business is up double digits. Even their PCs were up, <laughs> which is a beat. <laughs> they beat on gross margin. Microsoft's operating margins are 47.6%, which is just insane. The only slightly negative in, in their, their earnings was they were being conservative on some of their bookings guidance. <laughs> and so, I mean, they absolutely. I mean, that's, a, I mean, they're grasping at straws to go look for that. Look at Microsoft. This came clearly out of the Gen AI SuperCloud event. And this is uh, encapsulates the story, in my opinion. And I said this uh, in our wrap up there uh, Microsoft and people in market that have data and have presence are going to get a massive bump with AI immediately. And you see what Microsoft did with AI. They, they only, they, they won the marketing, uh, marketing war with this out of the gate. Obviously, they're leading AWS and Amazon by miles uh, on the mark. And I call it a marketing war in my earnings results on Amazon yesterday, my post, but they, but they have existing installed base in the enterprise. They have a, decades of decades of, of since their founding of enterprise selling. Okay. They've been a supplier. They got office 365. Now they got teams, their cloud, although not as good as Amazon on the cloud side, if you want to compare classic, cl classic cloud to classic cloud, Microsoft wins, got a great ecosystem. But Azure is winning by having a great product right now with AI for the enterprise. Okay, combined with the install base, combined with the relationships, AI makes Microsoft better in the enterprise and harder to switch or less um, inclined to get someone to switch to, say, AWS. AWS, leading cloud, was chipping away at the enterprise, and they were getting their enterprise chops together. And then in comes AI, which actually favors Microsoft because they can integrate it into their products where they have data. Microsoft doesn't, I mean, Amazon does not have that advantage other than where they have product and retail. AWS, because of their ecosystem strategy, has basically doesn't have that captive app market. Google does, Microsoft does, AWS doesn't. They have some, you know, call center and some things are developing. So it's going to be very interesting, see. So in my earnings analysis for AWS yesterday, one of my, my recommendation on my outlook was still positive. But the question will be for reInvent, where we're going to do our Super, five, Super Cloud 5 special event during reInvent, is going to be, can AWS parlay their ecosystem into AI scalable deals, uh, scalable partners? Can they make their partners more AI enabled? And can they convert their customers into viable sales deals? That's going to be the outlook. Who's in production is the metric. So, you know, Microsoft's clearly winning and they got a gift. And if you look at the cost, 10 billion, they've at least increased their market cap by 100 billion already. So it's just the lucky strike, the timing, 
the presence of what they got for Microsoft, it's just it's just a good win for them. I mean, they, you got to give them credit. You got to give the credit where credit's due there. Um, and the numbers are good. I, it's just, it's amazing. And it's a great turnaround story to go back a decade where they were. I don't know what their stock price was a decade ago, but you know, I know 15 years ago, it was in the 20s. Story's yeah. remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. And by the way, Amazon had a good quarter. <laughs> Amazon did 143 billion in revenue. Of course, there's a lot of you know the retail business, but still, it's 11 percent growth, and you know it's in constant currency. And AWS was right on my number. I had I had like almost to the to the dime, 23.1 billion, 12 percent growth. But the big thing to me, John, is AWS operating income this quarter was seven billion. Um, that's up from 5.2 billion, by the way, that, more profit. Which is, that, that's 30% operating margin. So you think about that. That's better than Cisco. It's not quite Oracle, you know, Oracle's <laughs> in the forties, but it's an Oracle's a software company pretty much. That's a really astoundingly good number. Um, and then, you know, as you, as you just pointed out, I don't know if you put it in your post or not, I think you did. Yeah. It's massive orders in late September, which is going to show up in Q4. So big bookings in, in September didn't yeah. show up in the numbers this quarter. And they, they threw off $21 billion in three, three ca free cash flow. That's Amazon in total. But the the big thing is we – so if you think about their $7 billion, AWS is $7 billion in operating margin, mm -hmm. that was only 25% of Amazon's operating profit. And so we've seen that number be over 100% in the past. Yeah. So Amazon's looking good, and I'll save it for my rant. The way the stock reacted after hours last night was perplexing to me. It was bizarre, but it's well, up today. Let, let's let's talk let's talk about that because one of the things I want to get into. You mentioned the profit number, so seven billion profit uh, for AWS versus five point two last year, same quarter, and their growth rate was twelve percent. They're getting killed on the in the press because that people again. Andy Jassy used to say this all the time when I sat down with him for my one on ones. Uh, every every year and he would always harp on it it's hard to get a double digit growth on as the number gets significantly and more meaningful and bigger so you know if you have a small number say you're doing a million dollars in sales and you grow by 40 percent, oh that's great but if you had 100 million dollars and grow by 40 it's a, it's a different animal right so scale matters but what's interesting is if you're amazon the numbers to look at is growth rates and the number that they're growing from okay and profit so on my post, what I got a lot of engagement on was the concept of what should Amazon do? Lower prices to get more growth or drive higher prices and keep the prices high and restrict the growth and increase profit? Because obviously the market responded, Wall, uh, Wall Street responded because I think one of the anchors on CNBC was just, I mean, I mean, I don't know if, if they have basic math skills, but like they were like, oh my God, the wall, the bottom's falling out. They hit a bottom. Okay. The, the, they're not getting that the, what's happening in the business. And then the stock dropped. You have a chart on this for your breaking analysis. And are you going to do deep dive? And then they got back and realized, wow, the profit number is huge. So this is classic. Do you optimize for the profit or do you optimize for growth? Okay, now that's a good one. Clearly, the cut cost cutting was the key factor, increases their profit, and they're overexposed from COVID. I think they did the right move. I mean, I mean, Amazon, Jassy, and Selesky, they've never been motivated by Wall Street, you know, chasing numbers. Um, so they're playing the long game. But you know, you got to think, Dave, in this market with workload optimization, post COVID, recession, the Israeli war, you got to hunker down. I mean, Every yeah. startup's going to in, in trying to increase their runway to get to cash flow positive. Um, Amazon's probably taking this time to take their medicine from the overhiring, um, but all that is the business. There's there's very little upside to doing an aggressive guide. You have to guide to what you can see. Um, most CEOs will say that if you if you have any uncertainty in your guide, you shouldn't guide up. In these days, there's just no benefit to doing that. But compare this to Alphabet. So Alphabet again, I thought it. Really good quarter. There's 77 billion in revenue. It's like 11 percent growth. I mean, it's amazing. But it's it's search is like 44 billion of that. Um, but Google Cloud 8.4 billion, and I have GCP at about four billion. So remember, Google doesn't report or Alphabet doesn't report GCP. It only reports Google Cloud. So it's not all the other software and stuff in there. But they said that Google Cloud had a a, a 266 million dollar operating profit. That's 3%, John. 
on my estimates. Okay, lower if if the if the revenue is higher than my estimate, it's even worse. Compared to AWS is thirty percent. So Alphabet, you know, they didn't talk about you know AI. They talk about AI a lot, but didn't talk about AI in the revenue number. And it, when you go back, if I've been tracking this for a long, long time, if you go back when Amazon and uh, Azure. AWS and Azure were about four billion, about the same size as I have Google Cloud at today. Those companies were growing at sixty plus percent, okay. And Google Cloud is growing at yeah, let's call it twenty two, twenty three percent. Google Cloud is probably growing a little bit. Google Cloud Platform (GCP) a little bit faster than Google Cloud. Let's call it twenty three percent. They should be growing double, maybe even triple that rate. Now they have more headwinds. They were later to market. But they've also got great tech. They've got great AI. So they're not growing fast enough, especially given all the AI momentum that they should should have. So that's a concern. But Google's still in great shape. They got $120 billion in the balance sheet. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they got a war chest yeah. to, to compete. And they're spending on 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 CapEx. And I mean, I, I it's a yeah. long game there, right? So here, here's my here's my um, a- angle on AWS earnings, and and I think this is very positive for the industry to see these kind of earnings because I think there's going to be a recovery, um, at least the big guys. The big guys are going to get bigger, and the small companies are going to get larger. Uh, I think if you're stuck in the middle, you're going to get hammered here with AI. So uh, you can't you can't fight the big guys, and the little guys are punching up with their AI skills because AI makes the small companies better. So the mid range company is going to be stuck, I think, in the middle. We'll get to that in a second. But here's Amazon's focus. Um, their key results were clearly cost cutting on the side versus the revenue side. That was clear. The numbers are up. Um, and the revenue side, even that deal, that the comment about the deals being the effective date in October that Jassy mentioned that caused the stock to pop. That's essentially what they're doing is they're putting deals in the next quarter to sort of hit their number. When you start to see stuff like that, you know the revenue side is not as the focus. They're going to put it on the next quarter. I guarantee you Q4, they probably blow it away. Gen AI is the focus. Everywhere you go at Amazon, every story, they're infusing the Gen AI narrative because they were a late entry into the generative AI marketing war. And I'm calling it a marketing war because Amazon had uh, some AI and some Gen AI in the works. They just kind of didn't think it was going to happen so fast with ChatGPT. Microsoft, with OpenAI, gets the commanding lead, and the way they marketed that gave them the leadership, in my opinion. Okay, so that that's the marketing war. But Amazon has lost ground to Azure in the thought leadership and on the enterprise side. Microsoft's gotten more str- stronger there. There you yep. go. The customers are more confident with Microsoft. You go back two years ago, no one was doing Azure. I mean, really. I mean, it's like, okay, it's Amazon owned the game. And they were catching up on the enterprise sales, enterprise mojo, motion, working backwards from the customer. AI just puts Microsoft back in the driver's seat there. It makes it harder for Amazon to take territory. We're expecting Amazon to continue in laying the groundwork for the long game for the next gen cloud. So, you know, next reinvent when we do Super Cloud 5 show, which is a uh, three days of wall to wall live streaming coverage um, during reinvent, we're going to we're going to unpack what Amazon's doing. They have to invest in the tools, Dave, the picks and the shovels. Remember the early days of the Web? You know, yeah. they have to bring better tooling. Cisco. Cisco. You have to build a website by hand, HTML. Now there's all kinds of creative tools. So they got to do that. And then their enterprise, their I mean, their their um their ecosystem is awesome. Amazon's ecosystem is second to none. Can they convert the ecosystem, okay, into a better AI-driven solutions where production workloads are going to AWS? That'll be the KPI for earnings calls um, on the AI adoption, I think the bellwether will be not how much CPU or GPUs are used, how many workloads are in production that have AI solutions, whether it's an AI wrapper or whatever. And then, you know, can they convert into into deals with their customers? Okay, that's gonna be the key. Can, well, can, can, the, can they build strategic partnerships with their partner network with AI? And can they increase their client engagements? Yeah, so cloud optimization, by the way, is still a thing. Okay, so cloud optimization is still happening. All three cloud companies talked about it. Uh, but as I wrote earlier this year, that's a feature, not yeah. a bug. Why? Because it drives long-term customer value because of the loyalty. It increases net revenue retention 
because it lowers churn. And so that all favors their, it lowers customer acquisition costs. Why? Because because you can optimize, there's less risk. And because you have lower churn, you don't have to go win the customer back. And so cloud growth is kind of playing out exactly pretty much as we expected. We didn't expect a huge hit from Gen AI until, um, at least meaningful, until Q4. I think you're going to see that in Q4. So the numbers have been right on with the exception of the Azure restatement because of the uh, poorly redacted uh, documents from Activision. And, you know, Google is a little bit disappointing, but Microsoft has made up for that. And then, but cloud growth continues to dramatically outpace overall IT spending rates. We're talking about 19% growth uh, for the big four, Amazon, Azure, GCP, and Alibaba. That's just IaaS. It's a $170 billion market growing at 19%. That's that's pretty impressive. And, and so, so you, you add all that up. And the other point you're making about the ecosystem is everybody's going to be bringing AI to their software, all the ISVs, all the partners, all the security companies, they're all going to be bringing AI to their data, and that's going to drive compute and storage for Amazon. And it's either going to happen directly with things like Redshift, or it's going to happen indirectly when you buy from Snowflake and you still buy compute and storage from Amazon. So it's almost like they they can't lose. It's, it's Apple-like in that sense, obviously enterprise, not consumer. I think the uh, that's a great point about that, that ecosystem, Dave, because Amazon has a tough choice, okay? And they're, you know, Andy Jassy loves Clay Christensen because he was a teacher when he, he was at Harvard. He always talks about him, I, and he's awesome too. But his his innovator's dilemma was always the big thing. Amazon's kind of in, a, in, a, in, a, in an innovator's dilemma here. Do they optimize for continuing the partnerships with the ecosystem at the top of the stack and make everybody on that side of the equation AI enabled? AI happy, AI, AI with AI for their, and make them better companies, by the way, from doing that. Or do they try to compete with Microsoft and start going after prefabricated solutions like suites and office? You no, know, we just, they just signed a deal with, with Microsoft to be an office 365 customer. So that's kind of be ironic that Amazon's email is going to be going through <laughs> uh, 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 Microsoft's office 365. And but that morning. says it all, right? Email. Yeah. What, did, what, did, what did Uber have? What did that special thing Uber had? Was it called gray ball where they can track people? Um, what does Microsoft have? I mean, if, we, if you're Amazon, you gotta be wondering who's reading Andy Jassy's email and Adam Slevsky, but this Satya Nutella sneaking in with their, with the little gray ball technique, you know, like gum in back door. Uh, I'd be like, Oh boy. Anyway. So, do they do that? <laughs> it can't be happening. It can't be happening. I, I'm sorry. It just jumped into my head. I never no should have way. said that. I would, that would never no happen. No way. In fact, we should say that. We should say Microsoft made the decision, I think, years ago not to be using AI to scrape emails and the, and the and, and do the, the look-aheads and all that stuff. I mean, because of privacy. Uh, I, I think it's played out for them. Yeah, I mean, you, the trust is huge. Anyway, that, that, let's table that for yeah, 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 yeah. The, the We're rant. not saying they're doing that. That's, <laughs> it's that's just jumped in my yeah. head. It's like <laughs> I just I don't know why I thought about it. Maybe, I mean, maybe it just shows you who I am. I'm evil. Um, <laughs> curious, once you need to know um, the the if the because if they choose to go the apps and make their apps better for Amazon Web Services, like what Microsoft's doing. It kind of takes them out of their lane, Dave, right? And, you know, we were talking to Dave Donatelli this week, who's now the CEO of Riverbed, uh, who's back in, in the game. You know, companies should companies normally do what they're really should stay with their in the, with their knitting, right? And good companies do that and then take territory, in, you know, in areas where they can grow. I think if Amazon tries to change the game midstream and this cloud war and try to get medieval on this and try to do something different, that could throw them back. So yeah, the question is, is it better to make everyone who's on your cloud better or try to get these apps? So I personally, I would stay with the ecosystem play and make everyone that ecosystem uh, faster, smarter, and and more profitable. Uh, okay. and, and, then, and then make that the lever and the strategic competitive advantage. And then Microsoft would get their pound of flesh and market share just on, on momentum and their inertia and the gravity of what they have with their assets and their enterprise sales team, their office suite and their suite of software working together. Uh, and it's just, it just creates apples and, and oranges. So I think that's the way I would hand see that playing out. Yeah. I mean, you and I talked about this at SuperCloud 4. I, I don't think 
Amazon would be smart of them, at least today, to try to take on Microsoft the way Google has with workspace. I mean, look at, I mean, it's worked out for Google, I guess. It's certainly probably half their business. But they think about it. I mean, Amazon's pretty crappy at, at building. I mean, look at Chime. Chime kind of sucks. <laughs> if that's an example. Whereas what they're pretty, really good at. I, I is, actually, I actually like Chime. Oh, I hate it. Okay. I kind of, I I, there's it. some feet. Well, I, I think like Chime's worse than teams and I hate teams. <laughs> okay. Well, let me just, let me just caveat up. I say this in using Chime, they have a callback feature. Like they can call you when the meeting's happening, which I think is cool. Um, again, maybe I shouldn't rat hole on that, but uh, it is Friday. Um, it is a nice feature. And I thought, I thought others had that, but anyway, my, my, but my point is their best bet is to reinvent industries or reinvent things like what they've done in contact center or what they're doing in, in telecommunications. So they're actually really good at thinking differently. Again, Apple for the enterprise and, and, and looking at, okay, how this industry is messed up. How can we make it better? You know, working backwards from the customer and then coming up with technology solutions and, and, and cloud services that can dramatically disrupt industry. That's their best bet. In my opinion, Developing up the stack software, I, I just don't think that's their core competency. Uh, um, they just haven't shown that they can do that, and I'm not sure why they would want to. Why would you want to take on Microsoft in collaboration? I mean, really, really hard to do. You're going to go compete against, you know, Microsoft, Cisco, and WebEx. So not, you know, that's that's where Chime is competing. Yeah, I don't know. Does the world need? better productivity apps i mean microsoft's doing really well people are happy it's not broken do you like microsoft over say google docs and spreadsheets so i think microsoft is better at google docs and spreadsheets the reason why we were on when you and i met the reason why we were on google docs is because i got so frustrated with the scourge of pst's I had to archive my emails because we were on exchange and it was just a freaking nightmare. Terrible. Yeah. It was horrible. And that's why <laughs> Well, that's Gmail. That's, 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 what... that's not sweet. I'm talking about I'm about Google's uh uh Word um Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying Excel but, but, versus but so, Sheets. Okay. Docs, oh. And yeah, but so yeah, but so that's why we got off of 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 Microsoft at the time and we went to Apple because it was just we we couldn't deal with it. We said, I oh, forget it, we're going to the cloud. But I, but there's no question that Excel is better than Sheets. Sheets sucks. It can't even <laughs> add. It has, there's so many bugs in it, and it's just it's horrible. I know. <laughs> you know, Google Slides. I mean, is is lame compared to to PowerPoint. PowerPoint is so much better. Um, and you know, Word. I mean, I like Google Docs because it's easy. But but yeah, Word Google, is Google Docs. Fine, is easy. Yeah. I don't know if I but, like Word anymore. I mean, I, I, Google Docs is ten times better than Word, in my opinion. Well, I, I would agree with you there because you know you just don't need that complex stuff. And sheets for, and for sheets are good. And sheets sheets are good enough. I think Google it gets easier, but that that, that bug you're talking about really bothers me too. It's horrible. You it's add the, you you paint a, a a row to add something up, and you're like, it's one point nine billion. That's not right. It's like twenty billion, and then you. You get out your calculator, you add it out, like just like you know, twenty point three billion, and you, what am I doing wrong? It's just they, 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 I mean, Google, a bunch of mathematicians fix that shit. <laughs> uh, I, I want to get, a, I want to get a reaction to you from Super Cloud Force since I got you here. This is fun because you had a good quote. I, I, this was written down. So this is uh, in one of the articles that the, the journalist wrote about watching us. You, this is your quote. You said this on on the on the queue. It's way too early to count out the likes of Amazon and Google from the AI race, despite some people calling it already. Um, and that's, you know, some, some sub stack called the tech buzz, um, Amazon's well positioned Volante, you said they've got to execute, they've got to deliver and they've got to show, and they've got to show at reinvent that people actually are using this stuff. Then I think they'll do great. And Google yeah. has among the best AI and people working on it. So the main question will be whether it's cloud presence is strong enough to funnel its many AI initiatives to customers in the way that they need it. Yeah. I said explain, that. That's pretty cogent. Ex explain. Ex it was edited. Uh, it was obviously edited. It was uh, edited. Yeah. <laughs> edited, edited for clarity. I'm only. I, no, I'm only kidding. I don't know if it was or not. Probably right. Um. Um. It came out of the AI tool actually. So, um, our AI tool. What What do you mean by that? Because you got a couple of things going on there. Amazon and Google in the AI race clearly there, right? The, the, the Google. We saw at Google Next clearly unbelievably strong in AI, and I expect it just to get better. Yeah. Um, they're focused. They're sharp. Um, they're explaining things simply 
It's not as fragmented as Amazon, which was one of my comments on the earnings was, you know, they got to clean up there. And I think they will. Their positioning, their messaging, um, it's all over the place. They're going to, they got to, they have to sharpen that up. And I, they, you, I think, I think they will. You, you know me, I love to take bath and spending data and a couple of things that I'll share with you. So obviously I, I you point to chat GPT as the seminal moment and you saw what happened to open AI and Microsoft and their momentum after chat GPT. You also saw that with the entire AI and ML sector, jumped up it had bottomed uh, you know before chat gpt october 22 it bottomed after being really at the height of the pandemic it was high then it came down after chat gpt it shot back up it stole from other areas so you, that's that's point number one point number two is we saw so a, a, after that announcement the momentum of, of microsoft but after google next we saw google momentum pick up mm -hmm. the other thing i wrote about uh we'll write about tomorrow but talked about in my breaking analysis today IBM Watson X, which was announced in May, it bottomed in April. And we're seeing in the spending data, IBM Watson X actually has some momentum. And so I truly believe that Amazon is going to be, Amazon announced Bedrock GA this month. They're going to be in a position to tell a strong story at reInvent, and they're going to get a bounce post reInvent. I guarantee December into January, people are going to be adding on to their to their their AI services, and so the the big question I have is, and we talked about this at SuperCloud Four, is this is the first time ever Amazon has not been on the lead. They're spotting points to the opposition. First time ever. Yeah, it's first time right? they've never been in, in first place. Right. It's like they've, been, uh, they've been the they've been the underdog before, but that's because they were already number one in cloud. But cloud was not yet anointed as the next big thing. This is back. Go back to uh, 2008, 2009, 2010, when we started covering AWS. 2013, 10 years ago, when we started covering reInvent, they were. I, I never were, saw them as underdog. I never well, saw them as underdog. I you know why. In 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 the industry, they were not enough underdogs in the cloud. But, but I got to tell you why. I got to tell you why. So I'm at an, an EMC meeting with Joe Tucci. You remember? Yeah, of course. Tucci was the, yeah, a legend. The le legend. So, yeah. you know, I'm asking all these questions about cloud, and he's rolling his eyes. He goes, all you friggin' analysts want to do is talk about cloud. By the end of the year, we're going to have a cloud strategy. Okay. You know what they did? They went out and bought Mosey. Yeah, which and ended up like, at Microsoft, I think. And I was like, I don't know where it ended up, but I'm like, we interviewed, okay. we interviewed the, we ended the founder, remember That's her? their idea of cloud. Okay, hey, this is going to be huge. And you know, about Amazon Gorilla Post, we covered, you know, reinvent. I mean, we were all over that. And, and as analysts, I think we we correctly predicted the transformation that was coming. But, uh, but I know what you're saying, that they were an underdog because you had this huge percentage of spending and install base on-prem. But it just, you know... I, I never thought I never saw them as an underdog. I just it was another innovator's dilemma to your earlier point. All right. So here's a more more uh, soundbite reaction. So I actually I actually said this. Walled gardens are the new goodness, at least when it comes to walls around companies data. So specialized models are going to be likely in the long tail of generative AI models in the power law that we showed. If folks aren't know what a power law is, we published a, a power law of AI models, how we see the AI models emerging and the evolution. It's not a map, it's a model, it's a power law. Now you said, then your your comment to that was most of the spending is going to into the long most of the spending is going to be in the long tail, especially at the network edge and the on-premise data centers. You're going to be bringing AI everywhere because data is increasingly everywhere and makes it more economic sense to move the computing to the data than the other way around. Okay, explain that. I mean, yeah, so I just want to. I, I kind of, I, 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 I kind of know what you mean, but I, 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 I want to. I, I just want to clarify that because the 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 cube power law is on the vertical axis is size of model, and we know who has the big models, mm -hmm. big LLMs. On the horizontal axis is model specificity, and you can we know you can do a lot with small models. And the long tail is, is there's going that's where all the action is going to be. There's going to be much yeah. more long tail, but. You, you, I, you, you I, can almost you can almost say the y axis could be consumption because technically the smaller yes, size yes. is smaller is smaller scale. That's a really good point. And 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 but I want to add because the power law and I and I want to make some amendments to this just to make it more clear. A lot of those smaller models are going to be running in the cloud. We don't yes. mean to imply that it's you know if it's running on prem, it's not going to run cloud. That only on prem can run the small models. No. There's going to be a big, big, giant models running in the cloud. There's going to be big models running on-prem. There already are. 
And but but the long tail is going to be smaller models, so size of models, and a lot of that's going to happen in the cloud as well. There's there's no question about that. So I, I did want to clarify that. But but, but the, I think because the, but the spending, okay, and yes. the cost, because what's going to happen? I think what you're saying is why I wanted to bring it up. Why I brought up the the concept of world guards, which is a terrible concept on in the old model, but now we have with AI, we think walled mar gardens of data actually is going to be the model. Google calls their stuff model guard garden model. Okay, they model gardens. I think they call it yeah model gardens. So walled gardens means protecting. So what do people want to do data with their data? We see it in security all the time. They want to protect it. Yeah. We, we're already hearing startup companies in Silicon Valley already forming to protect LLMs. Okay, you're going to start to see a firewall concept emerge. You're going to see all kinds of new stuff come out of the woodwork. So you have you know AI wrapping going on, which is great today. That's like building a website when the web came out. It's simple to do. You get the taste of the action. It's almost like you know you get addicted to it. It's like AI is like you know, once you have it, you don't want to give it up, and it's, it's so powerful. And then you say, what net new things could I do? This is where I think the commentary kicked into high gear this week was there was a realization from the senior players in the industry across every panel we did that once you cross over basic AI, wrapping it, using chatbots, using co-pilots, you're going to get to net new things that you never thought could be possible from, from data. That's going to be killer and everyone was talking about it at super cloud and everyone keeps going back to and so walled gardens is not a bad thing proprietary is not a bad word when you're talking about data because that means an advantage so it's weird dave proprietary walled garden we hate these words these are words that trigger us in the old days no one, <laughs> like, no one likes a wall now garden. we embrace them you're we, right. we want we want open the open web you know we want open standards we want open source software we love those things however those things are still existing, but the data under the covers is going to be proprietary. Like, like I mean, let's take NVIDIA. Do you think NVIDIA is open or closed? They got proprietary. Oh. They're got proprietary. Do we care? Do you no. care? No, it fucking works. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean. So that's right. my point. That's my point. I mean, look, de, de, de facto standards have always dominated the, the computer industry. Always. Right. So, I mean, so you can have proprietary coexisting as long as it's under the, a closed hard top. Like it's not if it's if you don't care if it's proprietary, if it works. So I think that's going to be very interesting because with open source booming, if you get some of these new proprietary elements into the system, you're going to have a great. So that's why I think companies in the long tail, the specialty models will come from companies. Like companies yeah. themselves will bring their data to the party and they're going to have to protect it. They're going to need to in, in integrate it. They're going to need, it's going to be alchemy with, say, multiple models. So I think there's going to be an AI system emerging. You know, I'm watching, I'm, I'm going to watch this and squint through this at reInvent. I'm going to ask this question to all the guests um, in person and part of our Super Cloud 5 special reInvent edition coming up in December. We're going to stream that all during the reInvent. So if you want to keep in the conversation and you're listening, tune in to the Cube. We're going to be at reInvent and we're going to run a studio performance where Super Cloud 5 will be. Um, we'll nail that. Uh, but we're going to be on site. We're going to have guests in the studio, more panels. Dave, the question is, what net new can you do that you couldn't do before? That's the question. Well, I think I think the first order of business, I've been saying this, is you got to show, enterprises got to show, every enterprise, every, most enterprises are experimenting with AI. Some are in production, but they're going to have to show labor cost reductions. That's going to be the easiest path to ROI. That's going to, basically print money you're going to drop money to the bottom line and then who's ever running those projects cto yeah. architects cio whoever cdos chief ai architect or you know or officer are going to be able to go to the cfo and the ceo and say look what i did give me more and they're going to have a gain sharing and it's going to be a productivity boost and in parallel they're going to find new business models new data models data marketplaces and that's going to take, in my view, a little bit longer because they have to figure out the distribution channels. They might, you know, some companies yeah. are going to catch lightning in a bottle like OpenAI, but those monetization models are going to take longer in terms of industries transforming. So people are going to focus initially on dropping, you know, to the bottom line, productivity improvements, reducing labor costs, reducing the need for hires, essentially eliminating jobs, I'm sorry, yeah. through AI. That's going to be yeah. the fastest path 
to monetization in in the near yeah. term and in longer term some of the really more interesting things are going to happen and um you know the the thing is there's so much uncertainty right now that's why you, you people weren't didn't know what to do with amazon's earnings when amazon stock after hours because it's like the new stuff is still not big enough yeah. to offset you know the old and so people are confused well azure's growing faster than amazon ergo we should yeah. sell buy, buy sorry microsoft's growing faster than amazon so we should buy Microsoft and sell Amazon. No, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. AI is going to lift all boats it, and you're, different, different animals. You're right on the money on that. I think that is absolutely right on. And here's the thing with Silicon Valley right now, which I love. You know, I live here, so it's kind of like a, a cool place. But there's a lot of focus on the thing, um, the retrieval, uh, this, that, and the other thing versus the end-to-end. -end. This came up multiple times. Um, I forget who brought it up first from Amazon. It's about end-to-end. Um, and, but, but they got to look at it as a system. So it's not just the model. It's got to be the end to end. And, and that's going to be what Silicon Valley needs to focus on. Not the tech, not the one thing, because AI is going to be it's about scale and, and models. Now at, at, there's two more things I want to cover super cloud with you, because on that point, Bratton Saha, the vice president and general manager of AI and machine learning at AWS was the keynote of super cloud four. He was awesome. He said, quote this, um, the reality is likely that the enterprises will use multiple models for different purposes. One model is not going to cut it. Okay. Um, he runs and oversees Bedrock, which is a service that allows people to access all the AI models. AI, uh, Ari Goshen, who's the founder of AI21, um, who owns one of the big mo models up there in the power law, he said this there will be a need for a sophisticated orchestration layer to coordinate them all. I think we'll see some really cool developments in the next coming months. Dave, he uses the word orchestration. So you got multiple models, multiple purposes, orchestration layer. Okay, now back to the power law. What cool developments are going to come in the next few months? So I'm expecting something to come out at reInvent that's going to be a little bit outside the box. Uh, um, it's got to be something. And when you, when you talk about orchestration, you talk about integrating stuff, right? Legos. You're talking about services. You talk about maybe blending a model with another model or doing something. You got to orchestrate data. Um, I I think it's going to come from the edge, I, and I can I use that term very broadly. It's going to come from embedded applications that are using low cost, low power silicon. The performance per watt of these things is going to be critical. And I think just as Steve Jobs did with the iPhone, what Elon's doing with the software-defined car, you are going to see software and hardware come together in the real world with robotics, with drones, with delivery systems, logistic systems, vehicles. And that's going to drive new economics into the enterprise. And people aren't going to see it coming. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's a niche or that's something that's unique for industry 4.0 or manufacturing yeah. or, you know, whatever, you know, weird use cases. But then over time, there's going to be expertise built up. There already is. It's being built and, upon and data arm. And, and data. And of course, data. And it's being built upon arm. And that, that's the, the point you're making is so critical because data can traverse industries. It can traverse use cases. It's, <laughs> It's basically, you know, yeah. it, it it doesn't follow the the laws of scarcity, as yeah. somebody once and, said. And, and this is the start. And the startups that are going to do this, this is going to interesting power dynamic. And I was uh, reading Sam Lesson stuff, which is awesome. Uh, he's got a great take on some <laughs> yeah, of the startups. Good. He's got some good data out there. Is like, he married to Jessica Lesson? Yeah, they're a team over there at the information. It, it, they but must he's, be a they're, a they're a really smart power couple, aren't they? They're a power power couple. Yeah, they got a family growing, and it's fun to follow them on Facebook. Um, both super smart. She's got the pulse. She runs information. But he also, you know, is in that Zuckerberg Facebook crowd. So, you know, he's a platform guy and he's smart and runs a VC firm now. Um, but he's like the the successful stars won't look like it the, like they were. So AI brings up a growth strategy because you just bring, you just put up something that's happening. The successful startups sneak have a sneak attack. They sneak up on the big guys. Yeah. They don't even know they're coming. They're hiding in the shadows like a stealth bomber. Right. They 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 just come out of nowhere. So 
that's that's that con- that's c- contrast to the Silicon Valley. Look how much funding I got. Go PR. Get the word out. Hire everybody. Stock options. Actually, the way to win is you go stealth like a submarine, sneak that you know, silent running, you know, that kind of thing. Or you just kind of keep it down low, use the data until you hit that flywheel. Then you pop up and take territory or take over because I think that's going to be the playbook. Because otherwise, because the big the big guy is going to be fortified with AI. They have all the data, and the people who can get that expertise, get that data, is going to take time. I was talking to an entrepreneur this morning actually about this. They're like, I literally love what you guys are doing at the Cube and how you got the data going on. And I'm like, I want, I have a vision. I work for the FCC. I've done all these things in legal and policy, and uh, I'm like. He's like, I want to do it. And you know what he said? I got, I can't get the data. I go, well, actually, someone might not value the data, so maybe you can get access to it. So I think that's going to be a key thing. And then, then understanding how reliable your data is and how you how to feed it into the models will be key. That came up big time at SuperCloud. So that questions, Dave, the, the whole observability market. How do you know what success looks like when you feed data into the models when you have synthetic data coming out, because remember, generative AI generates stuff. So you got to check the content, check the data to see what was generated that was good. Well, yeah, the the whole, that came out of SuperCloud 4 too. The, the folks from Vast, uh, Andy, uh, was talking about uh, model collapse because the more synthetic data you have, the the the, the higher the, the, the models will weight high, highly probable events. And they underestimate improbable events. And as we all know, it's the improbable <laughs> events that actually yeah. change the world. And so, so when I hear when I hear when I hear when I hear synthetic, I think about the big short. Synthetic. Uh what was that instrument that they use that the the price the bonds? <laughs> you mean uh, the uh, the mortgage backed securities? Mortgage, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, it's, the it's, stinky securities. This yeah. one is piled onto that one and piled onto right. that one. <laughs> it's a gar- piece of uh, pile of garbage. But um, you, know, you, talk, you talk about disruption and 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 uh, Clay Christensen, you know, the cloud disruption to me was pretty straightforward. It's like, you know, on-prem is slow and expensive and it kind of, you know, sucks. We're going to do all in, cl- in the cloud, swipe a credit card, go. Okay. And then cloud obviously brought more complexity, but that was pretty straightforward. And what happened is the whole SaaS business emerged on that and they said, oh, wow, we can convert email. We can convert uh, uh, ERP. We can convert HR. We can convert IT service management. We can cloudify everything. Boom. So they just basically took that model and brought the SaaS you know, into play. The internet was different. You remember internet, everybody went crazy about Netscape, you yeah. know, and then that blew up. Um, and, 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 but what really changed with the internet was the industry transformation. And I, that's what I see happening here. And that's why to me, the edge is so interesting because yeah. I think to your point about data, because something's going to happen in my view to completely change the economics, uh, uh, you know, at the edge. And that is going to, and again, using that term broadly, and then all of a sudden the economics of computing, the price performance of computing, it all comes back to Silicon. My view is going to, somebody's going to go, go, and they're already doing it by the way. You just, it's not, you know, mainstream yet is going to say, wow, we can do the same stuff for way less now let's just go attack. It's microprocessor based revolution. You're gonna you 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 definitely saw it with the internet. Um, you you saw it to a smaller extent with blockchain that really hasn't taken off. But I think you're gonna see it with yeah. ARM based silicon. Um, and then one other thing, if I may, mm-hmm. I said AI is a, 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 a is a tide that's gonna lift all boats. Two boats that are gonna be interesting to see whether it lists uh, IBM. IBM had really good earnings. They haven't had seen the AI impact yet, but they are going to, in my opinion, because of their consulting business. Just as they are able to, to, to rig the game with Red Hat and bundle OpenShift into their consulting and their services, they're going to do the same thing with AI. So they have a winning strategy there. The, the other, the question is Intel. You know, Intel's talking a good AI game, um, but you know, a lot of analysts are really excited about Intel. Yeah. Yeah, I think I beat, think but... I, I think AI is an opportunity for a company like IBM. Think about it. Yes, they they had a lot of work in their go to market with with Watson, which was failed. Now they can get back in the game because it's now democratized for them too. So mm. they have a lot of data. They have a lot of access to customers. So you know they should be looking at the power law that we have and going after that and just sprinkling that power law with all kinds of models. Watson right. X is legit. 
it's got I multiple, know, multiple I, query I, types. I, and, I, I haven't checked it out yet, so I can hold them in a reserve judgment. I'm skeptical, to be honest with you. So, I think it's legit, John. Uh, I really uh, do. I mean, I, I look uh, at it. It's just like really straightforward. It's good. It looks like it's good software. I mean, yeah. and who me wants shame and, on you? Yeah, but Watson was bullshit. I mean, they were trying to they were trying to save the world and do all this healthcare stuff, and they they had you know great ads. That was the best part of Watson was the ads, and okay, they well, way I, oversold I, I, it. I'm just saying, I like IBM. Don't get me wrong, but I'm going to reserve my judgment to take a look at no, it. So I'm just we'll, saying, we'll my opinion yeah. from what I've seen of of just sort of talking to people, looking at looking at the spending data, looking at the the descriptions of Watch, Watson X and what it can do. And it's, and it's now shipping. Well, you you had access to the executives, and then you got access to the talent over there to observe. I have not yet been in. IBM, okay, so, so we'll see. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see. see. So, I, we'll, so well, well, next time then, we get together with them, we'll we'll take a look at it. I mean, I, the, look, I I'll, and I'll be I'll down look there in November. But the other one is Intel. So Intel, fourteen billion dollar quarter, they beat by by a mile. Their EPS, they beat forty one cents versus thirty one cents. I think it was stock was up nine percent today on that beat. And and uh, analysts are coming on and like, wow, Intel, they're turning the corner, acceleration. Okay. I, everybody thinks I hate Intel. I don't hate Intel. I, I want Intel to win, but they're not winning, in my opinion. Revenue's down 8% for the seventh quarter in a row. Revenue's down. The client business is down 3%. Data center was down 10%. The network edge was down, which is like a billion and a half dollar business. That was down 32%. Uh, there were two businesses that went up. Mobileye was up 18% and Foundry was up 300%. Wow. The problem is, it's two growing businesses combined only account for 6% of Intel's revenue. So the big thing is they're on track to save $3 billion this year. So <laughs> I, I, I'm not sold on Intel yeah. yet. I, I think they've got a, such a long way to go. And I, I, you know, they talking about catching up to TSM by 2025. I, I, I just don't, don't see it, but you know, I hope I'm wrong. Well, I mean, Intel's got so much work to do. We'll see. Um, speaking of Intel, uh, Arun Sabramani and the vice president of cloud and AI was on super cloud. And one great. of the, one of the fun aspects of that event was, and you caught it before me, I wasn't as fast on the uptake on this one, but I loved his um, sentient a thought exercise. So he, he put a thought exercise out there. We'll, I'll share and we'll talk about, cause it was funny is artificial. He, he brought this up. He's is artificial. He said, this is artificial generalized intelligence which is the controversial notion of AI, which eventually becomes sentient. Is it already here? Okay, is the AI sentient? Is it already here? AGI, right? The machines yeah. smarter AGI. than we are. Yeah, right? AGI. Uh, yeah, exactly. And he says, he says hard to know. Um, he said, okay, think about this thought experiment in which he supposed that- <laughs> This was a mind F. I mean, so, this was so, really blew so, me away. So he says, let's have a thought experiment. We'll do that here. Suppose if AGI were already here, wouldn't it know- that we humans would be freaked out by that. So therefore would hide the fact that in, so in turn, it wouldn't know we were actually here. It wouldn't know that it's actually here. Hmm. Basically okay. saying that the AI would, would make mistakes, hallucinate, appear dumb so that we would be lulled. Humans would be lulled into a, a sense of relaxation before they took us over. It's like clickbait, Dave. This one makes us use it and then lulls us into using it. So it's a good thought experiment. The whole point was AGI is way out there. I mean, it's not even close. I mean, this came up you a You sure lot. about that, John? Uh, I, oh, yeah, absolutely. We could be in the matrix right we now, live, yeah. not even know it. <laughs> Which pill did you take, Dave, red or blue? <laughs> All right, well, um, that's super cloud. Just in summary, that was just a great event. You get, you, are you using the Cube AI to get all this cool, these cool quotes? Yeah, actually. That's, yeah. that's awesome yeah absolutely cube ai is awesome the um you know, folks listening we have an ai system for our cube where all the transcripts get transcribed into a uh, intelligent vectorized database that essentially finds all the hot quotes and uh, all the knowledge um, so we don't have to manually clip and edit and it creates native video mp4s creates content um, and we're growing our own content so we have a you know seeds of, of content from our AI small model and we grow all the quotes and kind the of like QBI.com, the QBI.com go sign up. If you have I'll good, you it's the classic thing, like a garden. If you have good seeds, linguistic yeah. seeds, you can grow, grow stuff. Cause you have the word combination. So, you know, that's the beautiful thing about the cube. We have a lot of jargon. I mean, I mean, our, I, our AI knows what soft, soft S bomb is software bill of materials. It knows a lot about the jargon. 
Um, it knows, how, you know, things like data bounded AI models, you know, so I mean, that's a word that Rob Streche used small. He said, he said, he said, I'm one of the quotes, smaller, more data bounded AI models have an, an advantage. Actually, I said that he said, the bigger the model, the more bad data and the more hallucinations kick. And that's what Rex, Rob Streche said, our Q analyst. Um, I actually said data bounded AI models, but like, who says that? Who talks like that? We do. <laughs> so AI picks up on it. Again, this is where I think the small models, and that why brought, that's why Bratton Saha at Amazon was all over this saying, hey, you know what? If you have a small language model or whatever you want to call it, and you want to have proprietary information or data that's an asset or like an intellectual property, if it's growing stuff, you want to integrate that and protect it into the bigger models. Why not? But you use it as prompts, not necessarily just ingestion. So I think, I think, you know, we're going to see, you know, a lot of movement and experimentation, but still, you know, what goes into production is going to be sometime in my opinion. So, I mean, I just love the super cloud, check out supercloud.world. There's a lot of great two days of content in there. Again, get some great reviews. We had great guests from founders uh, to top executives, leaders, technical leaders, business leaders uh, on the cube. Shout out to to um, um, the 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 external panel, the community panel put on by Howie Shu, yeah. was amazing. He had uh, AI experts from Salesforce, Google, and Microsoft. John and I gave up the mic, which we hate to do, but uh, Howie's <laughs> a friend, and he just Howie was he did. I love that fact that he did his homework beforehand. He conducted two polls beforehand, and he brought those that data into the the discussion. He got deep. It was that was a real highlight. That was like the cherry on top of SuperCloud Four. And then you mentioned uh, uh, Dave Donatelli before and uh, observability. I, it was interesting to hear from Dave. I mean, gosh, John, does he have like an encyclopedia of of Knowledge. you know history in the business and the whole yeah. the entire stack up and down? It was great having. Uh, Donatelli in in our offices. Um, I, I actually saw him last week at Randy Seidel's house, uh, and then you know two weeks in a row. So it was good to see him back in the game again. Sort of stoked about that. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah SuperCloud Four was tremendous. I, I, you know, it's interesting. He came to the office. We were talking, and um, he was talking about some of the his journey as an executive and even as an engineer at EMC. He's a product guy. He's he loves products. And oh, yeah. what I've always liked about Dave Donatelli is is that he can see through the bullshit and see the gets to the nuggets and the product side. He's got product mind. Um and that's got that that's hard to get a CEO that has that kind of leadership skills and they're current and always current on product. Okay, so yeah. he's now the CEO of Riverbed and, you know, someone's going to make some money over there. If he's in charge, so well the thing is too. I mean, we, he he shared a lot of sort of inside baseball off the record, but 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 the reason why I bring that up is because he he did it in a way to connect the dots to what's happening today, and so what I've I've known Dave since 1987. I mean, believe it or not, <clears throat> and and he's um he is a product guy, and he's you know he's a no BS type of individual, and he gets he knows how to get stuff done. And he also knows how to take what maybe looks like, I don't know why, why that's so interesting, and then turn it into something interesting. And he also knows how to take something that's garbage and throw it out and bring in something that's better. So mm -hmm. he's he's got a lot of expertise at that. So it's, it's I say, great, it was great to see him again. Well, just some breaking news. I just thought we'd get into. I got some time left here. I might as well just jump into some some uh, notable and a news. rant. I got a rant for you. Okay, okay. So, so some <laughs> Google. Google just committed, according to Wall Street Journal, breaking exclusive. Um, Google commits two billion dollars in funding to AI startup Anthropic. Okay, this right. is just on the heels of Amazon bragging about their this in their earnings call that one of their milestones was their partnership with Anthropic, Dave. This is what they're, yeah, they were no, celebrating. No. Wow. They were celebrating. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, major client engagements, you know, major momentum, you know, um, anthropic. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of mentioned this last time, which I don't know if it was last pod of the pod before, you know, the, these companies are kind of sleeping around a little bit, Dave, on the cloud guys. Like, like what, where's the partnership? Who, who's partnering with who, or is it, 
I might say sleeping around, you know, it's a metaphor for like, just, you can't have three girlfriends, you know, um, or maybe you can, I guess, in these days, in this day and age, but Google, Anthropic, Amazon, Anthropic, you know, open AI, they ha- they're not doing any other deals with anyone, are they? So you got Anthropic playing the field with the, mm. with the, they're taking 4 billion from Amazon up to 4 billion. So Google invests, this is uh, um, also Google invested up front into open into this open AI rival and then offer to 1.5 billion over time. So half a billion now, 1.5 billion over time. So some people are saying that this isn't really an investment. It's just a prepaid on their GPU charges. Well, that's kind so, of what Amazon, Amazon, Amazon did, right? Well, we I have not confirmed that. That's just speculation, but it, it makes sense. I'm pretty certain that's what happened. I thought they even said that. It's like a billion and a half with, with the, the opportunity to raise to 4 billion, but it's going to be funneled into compute resources maybe not i mean i that's i think that's pretty highly likely yeah so they have they have the claude assistant you know um for them okay but here's the thing with chat gpt so i went to the um etr data Mm -hmm. and what i did is i did a filter i'll publish this this weekend on break analysis i cut 1100 cloud customers so these are cloud computing customers i said who's ai are you using you know so it's it's filtering by by cloud and then the ai platforms and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven AI platforms above what is considered a highly elevated level. I have an arbitrary 40%, you know, spending momentum net score above that. Open AI is the highest, followed by Microsoft. AWS is right there on that level. Um, and then Anthropic is right there. Data IQ is there too, a little bit different player, but Anthropic, Databricks. Data IQ, Anthropic, Databricks, Google, AWS, Microsoft, and then OpenAI leads everybody in terms of momentum. And they're almost as ubiquitous as Microsoft being called out by IT decision makers. Yes, we're evaluating OpenAI. We're spending on OpenAI tooling, just like we are. Well, right. we'll keep an eye on all this. Again, we're going to go into the rant now because we're getting close to the hour here. Um, we okay. can go over podcasts, love, love podcasts. You can go over, um, before you do that, Dave, I just want to let everyone know that, you know, the super cloud thing we're going to do every quarter. Um, we're going to have a special super cloud five. Okay. Four just happened. Um, we're going to do a super, special super cloud five. Okay. And this is super important. Reinvents coming up and the cube will be broadcasting from our Palo Alto studios and in live stage performance like super cloud four but targeted for all the coverage around the hyperscalers and ignite and, is coming and up too it, so ignite will already be gone by then so we'll do a review of ignite yep we'll live stream during the three days of reinvent tuesday wednesday and thursday maybe maybe throw a little bit of material out monday we'll see but they, three days of live streaming we'll have a breaking analysis will be on site at reinvent doing editorial interviews the Amazon P- PR team um, has graciously allowed us to get some space in the press area where all the editorial press interviews will be there. We're going to be reporting from location back to the studio. Uh, and so you're going to see a whole nother coverage angle of AWS's reInvent plus HPE Barcelona will Rob Streche will be and panel reviews of Microsoft's Ignite um, unpack that and then a preview believe it or not google next is coming around the corner in april so they just had their google next but then they secured their next venue so the big cloud players are all getting it on right now and it's really awesome to see um and uh, as andy jassy used to say at aws competition makes us better he loves it i mean i don't say he loves competition he likes to win but um Amazon, I expect them to do some things, right, Dave? And we talk about that. We don't want to get into it now, but we just, just talked a lot about it. But SuperCloud 5 will be um, streaming from Palo Alto, California. Dave and I will be on location in Vegas for reInvent. So we're going to be doing live tosses back, to our, our content tosses back to the studio. We'll be reporting from the field and running stage performance in studio with Lisa Martin, Savannah Peterson, and other special guests in studio. So um, if you're interested in, in supporting that, we have uh, sponsorship opportunities. If anyone listening, put the plug in, but it's going to be great. We already got some great companies that, are, that have worked with us last year. David SuperCloud already in 
sponsoring us. So uh, we're really thankful for the, the great companies that support the Cube's mission, who see us as partners and bring knowledge. Uh, and certainly with our AI, it's going to accelerate. So I just want to put that plug in. All right, let's get to the rant. All right, so All right, what I, do you I got? got a chart. I got a chart that I sent Brendan, so he's going to he's gonna bring that up here. So right. so the chart said so investor uncertainty about uh, cloud and AI. So this is you go back yesterday Thursday, mm -hmm. um, and Amazon was basically down for the day. They were down one and a half percent for the day. People were you know concerned, nervous, you know the market uncertainty. <clears throat> okay, and then you can see here. The earnings print hits at like, you know, 401. And Amazon beat, you know, nicely. I mean, you know, AWS was pretty much on the number, maybe a little below, but nice profit. So mm -hmm. this, the, the the stock shoots up. Oh, so that's, a, that, that's at the closing bell. It just one. right after the closing bell. So the closing bell is where the, the, the red dot is. And then I say earnings print. Mm -hmm. So the earnings hit. People read the press release and go, holy cow. This is big profits, a lot of cost cutting. Boom, stock shoots up. Okay. Yeah. So you straight can see line, that. by the way, right up. Yeah, straight line. Then by like, I don't know, 405. So I here's me. I'm on the plane flying home from SuperCloud. I got I got one, you know, ear I'm listening to CNBC. The other one I'm listening to to the earnings call. Okay, with crappy Wi-Fi on JetBlue. And so, which my seat was broken, didn't go back. I was pissed, but that didn't matter. It was working. So um, at any rate, you can see here, it starts going down. And what happened was the, the guy comes on CNBC and he's like, eh, I'm not really bought into Amazon yet. I've been kind of bummed about AWS. They really didn't beat, you know, it's only 12% growth or deceleration growth. Amazon, uh, Microsoft's growing much, much faster. Azure at 27, 28%. So mm -hmm. I can't get enthused about Amazon until AWS is growing in the high teens and, and, or even 20%. So I tweet out. Now, Jesse hasn't commented. I tweet out. I'm like, wait a minute. This is a $90 billion company growing yeah. at 12% with 30% with operating margins. I mean, that's incredible. That's better than Cisco, almost Oracle-like. So then I hear it's like, like crappy Wi-Fi. So I thought I heard it. And then, of course, it's true. Jassy, we signed several new deals in September with an effective date in October that won't show up in any gap reported numbers for Q3, but the collection of which is higher than our total reported deal volume for all of Q3. Whoa, the analysts hear that. They're like, holy crap. Then all of a sudden, like breaking news, breaking news on CNBC. The same guy comes back. He goes, well, uh, maybe I, I'm going to have to <laughs> rethink Amazon. Like, yeah, no shit. And so then the stock <laughs> goes up and close up today, like 8%. It's so like people are starting to realize, wow, cloud optimization is not a bug. It's a feature, right? And they can build on top of this. And yeah. so we call you know, that combined too, with cost, cost we call, cutting. We call that I, too. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I mean, they're going to show post reinvent. I think they're going to get momentum. And I think 2024, you know, with the caveat that there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, uh, but then interest rates and so forth. But I think 2024 is going to be a, a pretty good year for for tech. Yeah, I mean, his his comment was such a sandbagging comment. It was so great to hear Jassy kind of game that out like that. Uh, and if you look at the chart, the chart actually it's it's almost the psychology of the, of the market. And, and I don't mean to hammer on CNBC because I like CNBC a lot. But the problem with the CNBC and some of these hot takes from these analysts who didn't can't I, I don't know do they read 10Ks? Do they not read financial statements? They don't understand growth. We talked. I was kind of ra mini ranting about this earlier in the pod about 12% versus the profit number, you can either make that 30% growth. And I mean, they could lower prices. We had on my on my LinkedIn, um, Adrian Cockroft said, hey, just lower prices on egress and you'll get tons of growth. <laughs> it's, just like, it's not, here's the thing, John. It's, it's like, not like yeah. customers, you know this. It's not like yeah. customers saying, you know what? I'm going to go off Amazon and I'm going to migrate into Azure. That's not what's happening. Yeah. What's happening is, Azure's growing because of Microsoft software estate. So don't assume yeah. that a higher growth rate for Azure, Azure gaining share is a negative necessarily for, for, for Amazon. The thing to watch is Google. Yeah. Because Google has I, good I, AI and Google has good data. And yeah. that's one of their bigger risks, in my opinion, for Amazon. If people say, you know what, this, that, that Google has a better data platform, it's easier, it's true cloud native, I don't have yeah. all these bespoke toolings, that could be a bigger concern. Um, but still, yeah. that's a big that's a big yeah. move. I, my my big my big critique and rant is that um, CNBC brings on analysts that actually are giving shallow takes 
Okay, they're not going deep enough and don't understand some of the things. And I saw um, a comment on 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 yesterday um, during the earnings call. Pensley Dietra, who I like, she's a good good host and a good uh, reporter um, on on camera as well. She asked the CFO, "Is this a, is this a bottom?" It's like that's a cliche question. Okay, okay. <laughs> <I know>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are some really good. No, I know, I know, I know. But, I, I, no, like I, but that's it's, 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 the... it's a good question, but it's the wrong question for Amazon. Tony Sakinagi comes because, on; he's really because good. Because the so nuance, some of them the, are really good. it's the good question, but not for Amazon because, as you pointed out, cloud optimization yeah. is is there's a different dynamics than stocks bottoming. Okay, because that's not the dynamic of the cloud, because even with AI, if no matter whether Amazon builds apps or not, they still will make money on the IaaS portion of whatever they do. So, you know, the Amazon and Microsoft are going to print money. Right. So, again, the rich get richer on this scenario. So well, there'll be there'll be a lot of posturing. And my and my rant is just get better data about the stories. And again, this is why cloud and we've been covering it for 10 years with the reInvent, you know, 13 years total with 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 um, the Cuban Silicon Angle, it's a hard story to tell anyway. Now you add AI to it, Dave. Yeah. Amazon, even Amazon's struggling, and they're, and they're and they're not dumb over there, but they're struggling with the story because what is the story? Because is it working backwards from the customer, or is it AI is the next generation? Do we build our own apps? How do we power the? Ecosystem? They have too many stories to tell because AI helps everybody. So again, I think there's going to be an era of story kind of find your way through it and then get the clarity and that's going to i think we'll start to see that at reinvent i'm not expecting amazon web services to have their story solidified by reinvent i don't think they had enough time they rushed some of their announcements out early i think they'll make steps towards that um but microsoft has no problem their message is clear our shit works better with ai buy more of it <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah, upgrade the license. Any questions? <laughs> Next, no. thirty it's bucks. Like, it's like Broadcom with VMware. We talked about that last week. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Dave. Um, again, great, uh, great to see you out here. And I just want to say that uh, super excited about the Super Cloud events we're doing. People love it. They love the format. We're going to do more of them. Um, again. We were going to do it next quarter for SuperCloud 5, but given the payload of content that's going to be coming out of our team coverage, our editorial team coverage of reInvent, and combined with Microsoft dropping their content messaging and, and announcements at Ignite, um, we're going to have to do a special SuperCloud 5. So look for SuperCloud 5 coming quickly, um, and that's going to be you know the reInvent special. AWS event, uh, which is kind of an industry event, Dave. So it's it's interesting. Is it is it an industry event or is it Mike Amazon's event? It's well, it's 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 definitely an ecosystem event, but it's you know it's controlled by Amazon. They, you well, know, we're well, we're in the ecosystem. We will be there in force. Rob Hof will be there. Mark Albertson will be there. Dave will be there. I'll be there. Our team will be there. We're going to get all that signal. We're going to suck that pond dry, Dave. We're going to get it done. <laughs> all right, John. All right. Thanks.